Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Wa lillahi alhamd, Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah, Inna alhamdulillah, Thumma alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu, Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina, Man yahdihi la fala mudilla la, wa man yudlil fala hadiya la, ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمد عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليثيره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وقال قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم كتابه بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل دلالة في النار نعوذ بالله من النار. We begin, brothers and sisters, elders, respected elders, praising Allah, thanking Allah for this day of Eid, this day of annual celebration and festivities, this returning day of happiness. And we begin with the khutbat al-haja of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the the sermon of need in which he stated sallallahu alaihi wasallam, indeed praise and thanks belong to Allah. We thank Him, we praise Him, we seek His help, we seek His forgiveness, and we ask God to protect us from the evil of our own souls and the consequences of our wrong actions. Whomever God guides, there is no one, there is no one, not even Satan, not even Shaitan, may God protect us from him that can lead that person astray. And whomever Allah, Allah Ta'ala allows to go astray, there is none that can guide them. Indeed, Allah says in the Quran, O oh, believers, O oh, those who have believed, be reverent of God, be obedient to God as he should be revered and do not die unless you are in a state of loving, willing surrender to God. Unless you are in a state of acceptance of God's truth and acceptance of God's commandments. Allah also says in the Quran, the meaning of what is in English for what I recited earlier in this blessed sermon of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam oh humanity and be reverent be obedient to your nurturing master who created you from a single soul and from it created its mate and from the two of them dispersed multitudes of men and women be reverent be obedient of your nurturing master Allah He's the one who nurtures you to until you reach your highest level of potential. And he is the one who created you and the one who owns you and the one who sustains you in every instant. Be mindful of your nurturing master through whom you ask of your mutual rights and be mindful of the wombs that bore you. Be mindful of your kinship ties, your relatives and your family ties. Indeed, God sees all that you do. And Allah also says, and for what was recited earlier from the Quran, O oh, you who have believed, be reverent of God 
and speak truthfully. If you do this, Allah, God Almighty, will forgive you all of your sins and rectify your deeds. And we need rectification of our deeds, of our fasting in Ramadan, of our standing in Ramadan, of our charity in Ramadan. Maybe we did not do the deed. We did not perform the deed, establish the deed with complete sincerity for, the, for Allah. Maybe we didn't give as much as we could have given. Maybe we didn't spend as much time reciting the Quran. Maybe we, our hearts were distracted during the act of worship. So we ask that Allah rectify our deeds. Yuslih lakum a'malakum. If you have taqwa and you speak truthfully and whoever obeys God and his messenger has attained the greatest success, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one of his, one of the reports that come from his wisdom, indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of God, the scripture of God, the Quran. There's no book that has more truth. It is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the more you and I emulate the Quran in our character, the more we recite the Quran and memorize the Quran, the more true we become, the more authentic we become, my dear brothers and sisters. Ramadan is the month of the Quran. It is the most truthful book in this universe, brothers and sisters. The Prophet ﷺ then said, and the best gentle guidance is the gentle guidance of Muhammad ﷺ. And the worst matter, the worst thing a person can do is invent something new, some new religion, some new spiritual path that is not rooted in the principles and the guidance of the Quran and the Sunnah, meaning by that a, a person invents something to do, and it's not within the Quran and the Sunnah. We're not uh, people who chart our own path to God, rather we follow the Quran only and we follow the beautiful wisdom of the Prophet Muhammad only. And brothers and sisters, he said, and every newly invented matter is an aberration and every aberration is a misguidance. And every misguidance ultimately leads to the fire, the fire of pain and suffering in this world and the hellfire. We seek refuge in God from the fire. Brothers and sisters, again, I say to you a heartfelt and, and warm Eid Mubarak. My message today is very straightforward and very short. Very straightforward and very short. There are basically five points I'm going to bring out today. Number one, this, how this Ramadan is like no other Ramadan that the Ummah, that the community of Prophet Muhammad has ever experienced in our history. Number two, we're going to talk about the, the purpose of our celebration. Why are we celebrating? What are we happy about? Especially when there is so much tragedy and, and trauma and, and uh, suffering ar ar around us. Thirdly, brothers and sisters, we're going to talk about the, the, uh, the etiquettes of this day and how to make the most of this day. And then lastly, we're going to speak about carrying Ramadan with you after the month of Ramadan. How do you keep the spirit of Ramadan alive in your heart? How do you keep the spirit of Ramadan alive in your home? The first point, brothers and sisters, is that, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that this Ramadan occur in a time of global pandemic, where, over, where millions of people have been afflicted with the COVID-19 virus and where almost 100,000 citizens of this country, the United States, and maybe since, uh, since the last time I read the news, maybe it's reached 100,000, Allah Ta'ala knows best, 100,000 people, many of them Muslims, many of them Muslims have passed away, have transitioned to the hereafter. May Allah Ta'ala have mercy on their souls and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give healing and give 
uh, uh, solace and serenity to the survivors, to the families, and many of you have loved ones who've passed away from COVID-19. Many of you are healthcare professionals who are on the front lines every day, every week, without a break. May Allah Ta'ala give you strength. And I want to just say, brothers and sisters, that this is unprecedented when the entire Muslim world fasts in such a circumstance where many of us were not in the masajid for most of Ramadan or all of Ramadan. Many of us did not observe i'tikaf, the spiritual retreat in the masjid. And so this, brothers and sisters, is a sign from Allah. It's a sign that we should take heed. It is a sign and a preparation, inshallah ta'ala. It is a preparation. And that's the word I want you to focus on. This is a preparation for whatever Allah ta'ala has coming for us. Embrace this moment with beautiful patience. Sabrun jameel, isbir sabra jameela. Have beautiful patience with this moment. Strive to help those that need help. Pray for those that are sick. Pray for those that are depressed. Help people in any way you can with your time or with your money, brothers and sisters. Because this moment is a purification and a preparation not just for Muslims, but for all of humanity. But most people know not. But most people know not. May Allah Ta'ala prepare us. And Ramadan is the best preparation. This month, of Ram this month of Ramadan, Allah could have decreed that the pandemic have ended before Ramadan. Or Allah could have decreed that it started after we'd observed Ramadan in the masjid. It could have started in Shawwal. Or maybe even after Hajj, it could have started in Muharram or Safar. Right? But no, Allah decreed that it would start this Ramadan. And there's a wisdom in that. There is a wisdom in that. And for many of you, I know, because you've told me, this Ramadan is the best Ramadan. How could that be? <laughs> it's because those brothers and sisters, even though Allah's decree is bitter sometimes, they were patient with Allah's decree and they found the silver lining in what seemed to be a cloud of being distanced and being, so, being socially distanced from the masjid, from the mosque, as well as from so many of our friends and our family members in this month. The second thing I want to talk about is why we're celebrating. We are not celebrating the end of Ramadan. We are not celebrating the end of Ramadan. Rather, we are weeping inside that Ramadan has come to a close. In our hearts, we want Ramadan to be the whole year. We want the gates of heaven to be open all year round, wouldn't you? We would want the gates of hell fire to be shut the all year round, wouldn't you? You would want the shayateen, the devils, to be shackled and fettered all year, wouldn't you? So we long for Ramadan. We would want millions of people to be freed and saved from the fire of their egos and the fire of hell every day of the year, wouldn't you? I know you would. So it's not Ramadan that we're celebrating the end of. We, we can't wait to the next Ramadan. We pray that Allah brings Ramadan back to us again and again and again. But what we are celebrating, Allah informs us in the Quran, But rather, you, they declare God's greatness. They say, Allahu Akbar, God is greater for what he has guided you with. And in order that you show thankfulness. That's what we're celebrating. We're not celebrating the end of Ramadan. We're celebrating the guidance of the Quran. We're not celebrating the end of Ramadan, brothers and sisters. We are celebrating the internalization of Ramadan. Now, after 30 days, psychologists say it takes 21 days to form a habit. Now, 
Ramadan is here in my heart. Now the recitation of the Quran, the habit of reciting the Quran every day is here in my, uh, in my heart now. Now standing at night in Qiyamul Layl, in night vigil prayers or Tahajjud is here in my heart now. Now giving charity again and again and again, not saying no to the one who asked, as for the one who asks you, don't rebuke them. That giving nature is here in my heart, being patient, not losing my temper when someone uh, uh, insults you or attacks you, saying, inni sa'im, inni sa'im, as the Prophet وسلم, taught us to say, I'm fasting, I will not fight you, I am fasting. That self-restraint is here now. It's all, all of this and so much more is a part of our character now. And so now we can take that with us beyond Ramadan. And that is what we're celebrating, brothers and sisters. That is what we are happy about. And shukr, gratitude, the greatest form of gratitude is not just to say alhamdulillah with your tongue, but it's to use your blessings to use your strength, your power, your money, your influence, your knowledge, your connections to help those who don't have them. That's the greatest shukr. So now use all the things that you gained in Ramadan, brothers and sisters, to help other people that are less fortunate. This is what we're celebrating, this day of happiness. The third point, brothers and sisters, is why? Why should we celebrate when there's so much suffering going around? We celebrate because, and we show thanks to Allah, number one, because he's commanded us to. And the Muslim is always the person, the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, who's looking to do the bidding the, to fulfill the command of their creator because they know and that is their happiness. And number two, it is to understand that your celebration and your happiness actually has a positive, cumulative ripple effect on those who are suffering. That may be tangible or intangible, but it is there. And so your happiness and your prayers and your joy it's a means of uplifting the spirits of this ummah, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and the spirits of humanity. SubhanAllah, so many people who are not even Muslim are flooding my email and my social media accounts with Eid Mubarak. They're not even Muslims, not to speak of the, the, the hundreds of Muslims. <laughs> and people are happy and people need happiness right now. People need something to be happy about. And so these non-Muslims that are saying Eid Mubarak to me and to you, they are recognizing your accomplishment. Many of them can't even imagine going 29 or 30 days without eating and drinking in the daylight hours. For them, it's, it's miraculous. That stuff they read about in the Bible or in the Gita or some of the books of the ancient people. Brothers and sisters, your happiness is a means for uplifting the collective spirit of humanity. And that happiness makes it easier to endure hardships. The fourth point I wanted to mention, I want to talk about Ramadan recipes. Ramadan, yes, Ramadan recipes. Many of you are familiar with certain foods that are made only in Ramadan. Maybe your mother, maybe your grandmother would only prepare a certain dish in the month of Ramadan. Maybe your father, maybe your grandfather had a, a dish he would cook in the month of Ramadan. But I'm not talking about those kind of recipes. I'm, not, I'm referring to the recipe of fasting, the recipe of charity. And I don't just mean giving money, I mean giving time as well. I mean, giving a smile, Prophet Muhammad, God bless him, a grand peace, said, even a smile is charity. 
I'm talking about the recipe of standing up at night in prayer. I'm talking about the recipe of reciting the Quran, studying the Quran, reflecting on its meanings, memorizing the Quran. I'm talking about the recipe of etikaf, of spiritual retreat, whether you observe spiritual retreat in your home or somewhere else in the masjid or brothers and sisters, this is a recipe for success in life. What, what makes Ramadan special is that we make time for Allah Ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said in a hadith that Sheikh Al-Albani authenticated as Sahih that Allah, that God said, Ya Bana Adam, tafarrag li ibadati, amla sadrak ghina. Oh, child of Adam, if you dedicate time for my worship, I will fill your heart with wealth. I will fill your heart with riches, right? SubhanAllah. If you empty your schedule, literally, this is what the hadith is saying. Oh, son of Adam, oh, daughter of Adam, if you empty your schedule for my worship, I will fill your heart with wealth, with riches. And I will prevent your poverty. Very different than the way we think. We think, you know, I don't have time for worshiping Allah. I don't have time for itikaf because I have to make money. I have to pay bills. That's not a prophetic mindset. That's not an Islamic mindset. That's not a Quranic mindset. 10 days out of the year, 30 days out of the year, brothers and sisters, not the whole year, just 30 days. And out of that 30 days, 10 days of intensity, we empty our schedules. We take vacation from work. You let your boss know a year ahead, six months ahead, I'm going to take off. I'm going to empty my schedule for the worship of Allah so that Allah can fill my heart with wealth. And so that... I will be free of poverty. And the greatest poverty is the poverty of the soul, not just the poverty of the pocketbook. And then Allah says, and if you don't do that, if you don't do that, I will fill your hands with being busy, with stress. On one hand, he'll fill your heart with wealth if you empty your schedule for him. And if you don't, he will fill your hands with all kinds of work and busyness, more than you can even carry. Juggling all kinds of things. And I will not prevent you from going poor. I will not prevent you from poverty. Ibn Umajah and Imam Tirmidhi and Imam Ahmad relate this hadith. May Allah Ta'ala help us to empty our schedules for Allah Ta'ala. So this is the recipe I want to talk about. Don't, a lot of people are worried about the shayateen being released. And if you are like me, you were, you've already been tested by the shayateen. <laughs> you've already, last night you were tested by the shayateen. You know the hadith is true, that the shayateen have been released. You know. But don't fear them. The K in the K the Shaitan Daif Daifa. Right? The 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 plotting of Satan is absolutely weak. Don't be afraid of Shaitan. Rather, be like Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. Shaitan was afraid of him. The Prophet said, if Satan, if the devil saw Umar coming down a path, he would go the other way because he didn't want to engage Umar ibn al-Khattab. This Ramadan, you have become strong, brothers and sisters. This Ramadan, you have become resilient, brothers and sisters. This Ramadan, you have cultivated taqwa, which is the primary character trait, virtue we focus on in Ramadan, which is mindfulness and awareness of the presence of God and obedience and mindfulness of his commandments and mindfulness of his prohibitions, seeking nothing but his pleasure. 
no compensation, no appreciation. That is taqwa. A taqwa al amalu bi tanzil. It is to live in accordance with scripture, with the revelation. Wa al rida wa al khawf min al jaleel. It is to feel awe of the majestic one. Wa rida bil qalil. And to suffice, be happy, be content with just a little of this world, of this material world, just a little food, a few clothes, a modest home, a modest car. I don't need to have 50, you know, shirts in my, in my closet. I don't need to live in the most expensive house or, the, or drive the most expensive car. I don't need that. Rida bil qalil is part of taqwa, being content with a little. The, I might be a millionaire, I might even be a billionaire, but the millions and the billions of dollars are not in my heart. They are in my hands. And if Allah gives it to me, I use it to benefit his creatures. And if Allah takes it from me, my heart is not worried or perturbed in the mid, in the, in the, in the, in the one iota. Wal isti'adad li yawmir rahim. Taqwa is this, according to Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, and it is being prepared to die, having your will ready, having your, uh, your kafan ready, your shroud, burial shroud ready, making tawbah every morning and every night, repenting to Allah all the time, you are ready to die. You've discovered your life purpose and you're in mission every day seeking Allah's reward. You are ready to die. And that's what we learned, these four things. This is what we learned in Ramadan, right? To live according to the revelation, to have awe, reverent fear of the, of the majestic one, Allah, healthy fear of God, to be content with a little sleep, a little food, <laughs> little socialization, and then four, to be ready to die. <laughs> This is, what, this, this is what taqwa is about. May Allah give us taqwa. Ramadan is taqwa university, brothers and sisters. And today is the day we celebrate your graduation. In conclusion, in this university of taqwa, you prove to yourself that you can go 30 days avoiding things that are permissible, that are halal. And if you can do it 30 days, you can do it for 30 months. You can do it for 30 years. It's a habit now. Don't be afraid of shaitan. You are strong now. And so brothers and sisters, if you can avoid what's halal, what's permissible, then know that you can avoid what is forbidden, what is haram. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. So in these, especially in this next, these next week, this next week, this is the most important week after Ramadan. Be careful about guarding what you look at, what you listen to, what you say, what you touch, what you think, what you put in your stomach, your intimate relations, physical intimacy, where you walk. Be careful, brothers and sisters. Guard your light. Guard the nur that Allah has given you. I can feel it coming through my screen. Guard the nur that Allah has given you by being obedient to God. That's why we fast six days of shawal. And I encourage all of you to start fasting the extra six days of shawal tomorrow. If you, and if you have days of Ramadan to make up, right, because of sickness or because like our, our sisters, if you have a day to make up, then start making it up tomorrow. Don't leave, don't leave any window for shaitan to change your Ramadan habits, your Ramadan schedule. Brothers and sisters, if you stay consistent, shaitan cannot do anything to you. And like Omar, inshallah, you will become a person who, when shaitan sees you, he'll go the other way, inshallah. The Prophet sallam, his Satan, his devil, Aslam, Allah made it Muslim for him. You can change the shaitan 
into your ally instead of your enemy with the help of Allah, not the shaitan. We're not talking about the father of the shaitan. We're talking about your personal qareem, right? And then lastly, brothers and sisters, I want to end with encouraging you to make a schedule. I want to leave you with something very practical. Make a schedule of Quran every day. Put it into your calendar, just like you do with your appointments, just like you do with you know, all the other important things in your life. I'm going to recite the Quran at this time every day. Put an alarm on it, right? Have a schedule of fasting at least three days every month at the minimum and make it a real fast, not a fast where you're still on Facebook, right? Unless your business you know, or your work requires you to be on social media. Otherwise, when you fast, turn off, unplug, unplug the social media, unplug from the matrix, right? When you're fasting. Have a schedule of charity. And mashallah, there's lots of charities now, uh, like Launch Good, that are owned by Muslims and that are automated. You can automate your charity so that every day of the year, there's, you know, a dollar. You're giving a dollar or you're giving $10 or $100. Or, yeah, it's beautiful, right? Automate your good deeds, right? Automate your good deeds. Have a schedule of spiritual retreat. The Prophet ﷺ did not only make i'tikaf retreat in Ramadan. Sometimes he made it outside of Ramadan. So have a schedule. I'm going to make retreat every month or every quarter of the year. But don't just wait till Ramadan. Make a schedule, brothers and sisters. And have a schedule of helping others. Have a schedule. Or at least when someone comes to you seeking your help, make sure that you uh, always offer a helping hand. Brothers and sisters, I give you my love. I give you my sincere, heartfelt appreciation. MashaAllah, we have over 400 people, uh, or rather devices that are logged in, and who knows how many people, with the wives and the husbands and the children and the grandparents and the cousins and, and whatnot. So may Allah Ta'ala reward all of you. MashaAllah, may Allah make this your, uh, one of your best Eids ever. Decorate your homes if you haven't already. Get out the balloons, get out the Eid Mubarak banners and the, and the lights. We don't call them Christmas lights in our house. We call them Eid lights. Get out the Eid lights. Get out all the different decorations. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, we ask that you pray for us. And I ask that you pray for our masjid, the Muslim Center of Greater Princeton. I ask that you remember us in your prayers. I ask that you consider making a donation to our masjid for, to help us with our operational expenses that have not gone away, even though we are not able to be in the masjid due to the executive order of Governor Phil Murphy and the federal government, we still have expenses. So I appeal to you, no amount is too small. If you can give our masjid a dollar with sincerity, that is great. If you can give our masjid $10 or 100 whatever you can. And then also, we want to end with asking you to pray for all of the Muslims of this country who are in pain and suffering, those Muslims who are in other countries who are in pain and suffering. We want to ask you to pray for non-Muslims, our brothers and sisters, our neighbors who are Jewish, who are Christian, who are Hindu, who are Sikh, who are Jain, who are Baha'i, who are... Um, Jewish, who are Taoist, who are Confucian, and so on and so forth. Pray for their goodness and guidance. Pray for their well-being. Pray for their health. Pray for their success in this life and in the next world. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Oh Allah, we ask that you send blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad and his family and his companions. Oh Allah, we ask that you bless us in this Eid. We ask that you accept all of our good deeds, all of our noble intentions in this month of Ramadan, in the month of Ramadan that just passed us. Oh Allah, we ask for the reward of our intentions, those acts that we intended to do that we did not complete in Ramadan, oh Allah. We ask you to
to reward us, Ya Allah. We ask you for their blessing, Ya Allah. إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ As your Prophet Sallallahu said, وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِمْرِ in مَنَوَى Actions are by in, in, in the intentions uh, that are behind them and a person only gets what they intend, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask for uh, that you relieve the suffering and the pain of humanity in the world, Ya Allah. We ask, O oh Allah, that this day of Eid, that the happiness that we feel that it is shared by people all over the world, Ya Allah. We pray for all the masajid, for all the communities of faith, Ya Allah. We pray for the Ummah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask for blessings, we ask for openings, we ask for light, we ask for increasing guidance, we ask for healing, we ask for inward and outward healing, we ask for unity, Ya Allah. And we ask, O oh Allah, that you prepare us and that you make us among and our children and our offspring among the helpers and among the lovers of Jesus Christ, alayhi salam, whose return we expect, and Sayyidina Imam Mahdi, Ya Rabbil Alameen. O oh Allah, we pray for our parents. We ask that you forgive them, that you guide them, and our ancestors to Adam and Eve. And we pray for our children and our offspring, that you have mercy upon them, and that you may keep their feet firm upon faith, Ya Allah, to the Day of Judgment. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursaloon. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakum ala khayran. Ameen. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh.